what I'm going to try to do today is make a spring on the lathe. Um, the spring is going to be to replace this trigger spring right there, uh, which is about one eighth inch diameter, and it looks like the wire diameter is probably about twenty thousandths. Uh, the trigger pull on this barrel action is very hard and it's mostly caused by that heavy trigger spring right there. So if I can get a lighter trigger spring it should lighten the trigger pull on this action. The problem is that I can't find this trigger spring anywhere. Uh, I can't find a tiny spring anywhere uh, that's anywhere will fit in the, the recess in the trigger here. Uh, just can't find it commercially. There's some made in China, but I, I really don't want to buy it from China. So I'm going to make an attempt at winding my own spring on the lathe. Okay, I'm going to talk about how I set up the lathe. Uh, I've never wound a spring on a lathe, so I'm not sure this is even going to work, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, what I have is... 15 thousandths music wire going through the tool post here and I have the wire running over the top of a piece of wood and the wire is sandwiched between the piece of wood and a piece of aluminum and I use these screws here to adjust the tension on the wire um, I have to have enough tension to hold it in place but not enough tension so that it does not slide now the, uh, the lathe, I put in back gears so it'll run very slowly. I have the uh, gears, this is, uh, you change the gears on this lathe to adjust the lead screw feed. And I have a 32 tooth gear here and a 64 tooth here. And according to the little chart here, that's going to give me 16 threads per inch or in this case 16 coils per inch hopefully. I have a piece of uh, welding rod <clears throat> which I'm going to use as a mandrel. The welding rod is uh, I think about 93 thousandths of an inch and what I've done is taken the music wire, <clears throat> wrapped it around the mandrel several times by hand, and then just squeezed it in the jaws of the chuck. Uh, now I realize that the mandrel will wobble a little bit as the chuck turns, but that really doesn't matter because uh, I'm just winding the wire around the mandrel. Now the other end of the mandrel here, I'm going to hold in place by using the tailstock chuck. Uh, I've greased the end of it here and I will tighten the tailstock chuck down just enough to uh, support the rod but still let it turn. So what I'll do now is uh, turn on the lathe and check my uh, feed on the uh, table here or whatever the carriage. So we'll turn the machine on. I'll uh, engage the lead screw into reverse because I want to move away from the chuck. And the lead screw is now turning. So we come over here and we engage the half nut. And consequently, since I didn't watch what I was doing, I've got a real mess on my hands. Um, I wound a spring completely around the uh, mandrel, but the mandrel wasn't supported here. So uh, that's a mistake, and I'll have to reset it up and try again. Okay, so now after that last uh, big mistake, I'm going to set it up again. I've wound the music wire around the mandrel, stick it in the chuck here, 
tighten the chuck so it grabs the wire. Now I won't make the same mistake again. Move the tailstock in to support the other end of the mandrel, and I will tighten the chuck just enough to uh, wind this in, take up the slack on the wire as I'm winding it in. Wind it in to make sure that my chuck clears here. Okay, we'll engage the back gears. Half nut is uh, loose. I have the lead screw in reverse. Let's turn it on and see what kind of uh, spring we can wind. So here we go. Looks like it's winding a spring. So far, so good. I'm not sure how much spring back is going to happen. Whether that's the proper size mantle or not. It appears we are getting some kind of spring. I got to watch I don't run this tool into the chuck here. Get ready to shut it off. Okay, I think we're about there. Now I make a nice end on it. By stopping the lead screw, I put the coils close together and I'll have a nice end that I can grind flush. So before I take this out of the lathe, let me show you what's what. Here we have the... These are the normal coils while the lead screw was engaged. And then when I stopped the lead screw, the coils just piled up against one another, which is fine. It gives me a nice end on the spring. The other end is where the wire was held by the jaws of the chuck and on this end the mandrel just slides within the jaws of the tailstock screw and the music wire is fed over this piece of wood through the tool holder to the mandrel. So I'm going to take this apart and see what size spring we wound up with. Okay let's uh, see if we can Clip this wire here. All right. Take that out there. And surprisingly, I didn't get much spring back. And there's my spring. I don't know if it's the right size or not, but we'll measure it and see. Okay, it looks to me like the spring I made is too big. I'm trying to replace this spring with this. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but this spring that I made is too large of a diameter than the one I'm trying to replace. So that means I have to go with a smaller mandrel when I wind the spring. But surprisingly, I was able to wind a spring on a lathe, which I've never done before. Not that difficult. Okay, so after the first uh, attempt, I'm going to use a much thinner mandrel here. I got my music wire, so I will wind this around here to get it started. And of course I wound it in the wrong direction. So let me 
clip that off and try it in the right direction. I'm a little surprised that it doesn't spring back very much. So now I will load this in a chuck. Tighten the chuck on the wire. Now we have to load the wire through our feeding mechanism here. What I've done, if you can see it, is just taken a piece of wood, laid the wire on the wood, and hammered the, the wire so that it made an impression in the wood, so it made a little channel in the wood that, so that the wire will run through the tool holder. Ooh, that's too tight. That feels pretty good there. All right. Now we will turn our tool holder to the right orientation. Take up the slack here. Come down to position. Position my tool holder roughly 90 degrees to the mandrel. I set a stop on the lathe here so I don't run the tool holder into the chuck. Take up the slack as I feed the cross feed in. I want to get the tool holder as close to the chuck as possible. Without hitting it. Set my stop right there. Take up the slack on the wire. Now I will grease the end of my mandrel a little bit. It's going to be held by the tailstock chuck. Okay. Check the tension on the tailstock chuck. That looks good. Put it in back gears. Half nut is disconnected, disengaged. Uh, my lead screw is in reverse. And I think what I'm going to do is engage the half nut before I turn the lathe on. Okay, now we're going to see what happens here. And we are winding a spring, as you can see. The mandrel is floating in the jaws of the tailstock chuck. Half, half nut is engaged. 
Now we're getting close to the chuck, so I'm going to have to disengage the half nut. And the spring will wind and end by wrapping the coils close to one another. So we have a spring now. When I take it off the mandrel, we'll see how much it springs back. Okay, so I've clipped the spring, and it did spring out a little bit and made a little bit bigger diameter due to elasticity in the wire, but uh, it looks pretty good. So let's uh, back off the tailstock, loosen the chuck here after I disengage the back ears. And clean the grease off here. Wow! We have a spring that might very well be just what I need. The right size. Pretty amazing. So I have my failed attempt here. First mistake and then first spring that I made. Too big a diameter for what I need and this is the final spring. Hopefully it'll fit and work in the rifle.